Hey YouTube, I'm Tactical Fork, and today we are going to discuss the mechanics and madness of the Hollowed Lair Grandmaster Nightfall boss room. This Grandmaster was brand new in Season 15, which was also our introduction to Scorn Champions. The champions themselves, while dangerous, were not even the biggest concern in this strike. The real boss in this GM, and something to always be aware of in the boss room encounter, are the Mini Screebs. That's right, Hollow Lair has a Grandmaster modifier called Festering Rupture, which states that Scorn Stalkers spawn Mini Screebs on death. These are heat-seeking miniature globs of destruction that you must account for. Pro tip, take use divination, works really well against these since you can lock onto them as targets. Generally for boss rooms, I like to provide a few pieces of general advice. Take your time and keep in mind the add spawn rotations. This boss room is a true arena. There are no high ledges or places to take shelter really. Cover is limited and all enemies can get up close and personal no matter where you are. Understanding the spawns of each phase will improve your success in this room 100%. When adds are in the room, do not damage the boss. All adds spawns are health gated by boss damage. It is best to deal with all the adds before dealing damage to the boss, especially during the tether mechanic. You don't want to be a sitting duck in the air with 10 scorn staring straight at you. The Fanatic has two primary attacks. First is the arc bolt that he shoots out of his giant staff. The second is a lightning storm AOE that he will throw down on the ground of unsuspecting guardians. He technically also has a stomp mechanic if you get too close, but I don't consider that one of his primaries. And finally, during the Fanatic's tether, be sure to backpedal. Your momentum will continue through the tether to buy you a few extra seconds to break the Fanatic's shield. And now with those general guidelines out of the way, let's talk about the boss room encounter itself. It is split up into three phases. In each phase, you will have sections of boss damage as well as add spawns. So let's get into how that works. For the sake of describing each phase, we're going to break up the boss room into five sections. Left, mid, right, back, and front. You can call them whatever you like, but when you hear me say one of them in this video, you'll at least understand what that means. To start this boss fight and phase one, you need to enter the glowing ring in the middle of the room. This will trigger the fanatic to spawn in and he will immediately be damageable. You want to damage him to trigger the first add spawn, which will spawn on the right side of the room. This will spawn a corrupted raider and a handful of stalkers. Remember, when you kill those stalkers, there are mini screeves hunting around for you. After you handle all of those adds, you and your fire team can return to do damage to the boss to trigger the next add spawn, which will spawn on the left side of the room. Again, you'll have a corrupted raider and some stalkers. But once you've dealt with that add wave, go back to damaging the boss to trigger his teleport immunity phase. When he does this, he actually leaves the room, so you won't actually see him. Once he does, you'll have a few seconds before a massive ad wave spawns at the back of the room. A tip that our fire team found helpful and that you're seeing here in the video is that we all grouped up in the back left or right corner near where the ads spawn and we traded supers to handle each wave. There are two waves of this ad spawn in phase one. So by grouping up in a corner close to them, we're pulling their aggro in a single direction. This funnels them toward us and into our supers. So that way we could guarantee that we were clearing all of them in the same mass of chaos at the same time. In that second section of ad wave, an overload chieftain will spawn. So this is usually the last, uh, last enemy that you'll be dealing with. Uh, because everything else should be dead. So feel free to uh, stun the overload and deal with him. Phew, take a breath. It's time for phase two. This next phase looks very similar to phase one with the introduction of the tether mechanic. Once you kill the overload chieftain, the fanatic will spawn back into the arena. Phase two starts just like phase one. 
boss damage. You want to whittle away at the fanatic to trigger his tether, at which point your screen will start to glow purple. You'll be teleported into the air. Now remember, from my general list earlier, start backpedaling as this is happening. Your backpedaling motion will continue your momentum through that teleport, and you'll actually continue to be going backwards in the air even, even after you get tethered. This will buy you a few more seconds to break the fanatic shield. Once you break his shield and fall back to the ground, this essentially triggers the first ad wave. I know I said that, you know, all the ad spawns are health gated. Well, the health gates in this phase are extremely tight by like one or 2%. So just in the act of like breaking his shield, if you hit him a couple times afterward, that's probably enough to trigger the ad spawn. So again, phase two starts with boss damage to trigger his tether. After he, you get tethered and break his shield and you damage him even a little bit, this will trigger the first ad spawn, which spawns on the left side. This time you'll be dealing with raiders and stalkers again. Deal with these ads and then return back to boss damage. And again, in phase two, this will trigger his tether mechanic. Again, start backpedaling, gain a little momentum, break his shield. And again, the, the health gated ad spawn here is extremely tight. So more than likely after you break his shield again and you drop down, you're going to be dealing with the next ad wave, which is spawning on the right side of the arena. So again, the, the left and rights have just been swapped from phase one. Um, and again, you'll be dealing with uh, corrupted raider and stalkers here. After you deal with the ad wave on the right, go back to dealing boss damage once again. Deal damage until the fanatic teleports away. And again, just like at the end of phase one, you'll be dealing with another um, couple massive ad wave spawns. Um, again, our team just handled it the same way we did before, where we grouped up in kind of the back left corner and we just traded supers to deal with all the ads coming at us. After those two ad waves, instead of an overload chieftain, you'll have an unstoppable abomination in this phase. Again, stun the champion, kill him, and this will take us to the beginning of phase three. Once the unstoppable abomination is down, the fanatic will spawn back into the middle of the room. Again, he will be damageable immediately, so damage him to trigger the ad spawns. The ads will spawn on the right side at the beginning of phase three. You'll be dealing with stalkers, raiders, and now a wraith. Uh, solar, solar weapons can come in real handy here for that shield, or with the advent of the recent Arbalest buff, where it's anti-barrier and also can deal with any shield type, it's become a real viable option in Grandmaster content. Deal with these ads that spawn on the right, return back to doing boss damage to once again trigger the tether mechanic. So again, backpedal, get tethered, break shield, come back down, deal boss damage to trigger the next ad spawn, which will spawn on the left. Again, you'll be dealing with stalkers, raiders, and a wraith in here in phase three. Handle those enemies and then deal boss damage to trigger a final tether. After this tether is broken, the fanatic spawns a final ad wave, but it's at the front of the room where you enter the arena. So you have a few seconds in between when you break his shield and when this ad wave comes in. And by now his health should be low enough that if you just force fire him, you can melt him before you have to deal with these ads. So you either need to run up to the boss and do all the damage you can muster, or you'll need to begin moving to the back of the room and deal damage along the way to avoid getting overrun by that last ad spawn. Either way, focus fire as much as you can on the boss, deal with the ads if you must, and that's it. GM completion. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something about the mechanics of this boss room encounter. When this first came out, it was extremely hectic because it was new and no one knew exactly how it was going to work and what the timings were. But I'm hoping that with this three phase layout, you get a better idea of what to expect and where to expect it is always the important part of this uh, GM stuff. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I really hope it helps you complete this nightfall. Please consider giving the video a like and subscribe to my channel for more Destiny 2 content. If you want to see this kind of stuff happen live, I also stream over on Twitch every week. The link to my channel is down below in the video description. 
Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.